Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. My name is Magla Pillay, and it is my honor to introduce to you today our speaker, Sister Denise, who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over four decades. Today's topic is entitled Pure Vision. What we are doing in this series is to look at the variety of subjects that spirituality covers. We are looking at the core of spirituality. We want you, the viewer, to look at whether there is a balance in your life between the internal and the external, whether you are happy with your relationship with God, whomever you believe him to be, whether you have a, a sense of, that all is right in your inner world. The subject of pure vision is of interest in within the context of spirituality, and Sister Denise will take us through why that is. Sister Denise, thank you so much for joining us, and a very warm welcome to today's show. Thank you very much. So tell me, pure vision. Um, when I look at another human being, I see their obvious physical attributes. If I know them from the past, some past memories will come to mind when I see him or her. And then I will engage with that individual on that level. Uh, do you do it differently? In spiritual practice, you actually learn to shift your eyes to be able to see the person. I don't know if you've ever experienced that you've really been seen, totally seen as who you are, what you are by anybody. Because usually people see, um, especially with women, they just see the woman as a sexual object a lot of the time and they completely disregard that there might be anything in between the ears as it's as. Uh, we can say. Um, and so the thing is to also see not just the person in terms of your relationship with them, like you'll say, okay, this is my child. You see this person only as, you know, like a possession, my child. Or you see my husband or my wife as a possession, more as an object. So pure vision is you really see the person, who they are in their own right. You see the quality of the soul. You are not looking at the mask. You are looking at who's behind the mask. You are looking at the person within. And you're also looking at yourself in that way. Otherwise, people are very preoccupied uh, with and attached to their bodies. And um, pure vision is that you see the real person, you see the spiritual person within the physical form. Mm -hmm. Mr. Denise, um, why adopt pure vision? Why not continue uh, the way one is going along? Because it's normal and natural to look at someone's uh, physical attributes, even though you may not do so all the time. It's become normal and it's what everyone does. Why, why is there need to change this? I think um, it's because when you look at a person in terms of their physical attributes, you relate to them in those terms and you think of them as that only. So it's a very limiting kind of vision. And also I think that it can encourage um, interaction which is based on negative emotions. And so that's also another reason why um, if we want to move away from dysfunctional interaction, we really need to be able to see the person who they really are. Hmm. Uh, I like the expression dysfunctional interaction. Um, do you think that um, that's how ge people generally relate to each other? Yes, I do. Hmm. Okay, and that has what uh, consequences? Well, it means that you, you see a person as an object or you see a person as how you can use them or abuse them uh, or you um, don't see the person at all. Uh, you completely miss the person and then uh, the relationship is like, you know, ships in the night crossing. You never really meet them. You never really see them. Hmm. And so that the interaction is only in terms of what you can get from them. Sister Denise, I once heard um, it said that the worst feeling in the world is to feel invisible. Uh, 
Um, and that gives a person uh, the feeling that, why should I bother to exist? Nobody sees me anyway. It's an extremely debilitating uh, uh, sense of um, self or lack of sense of self. Um, how does pure vision cure that? Well, I think, um, I don't know that pure vision will necessarily cure it, but I think that if you are um, not seen, I mean, I, I remember a time when uh, someone came to, to visit a center where I was, and they thought that, um, well, there aren't any people from India here, which means nobody's here. And they said to each other, well, nobody's here. And I said, you know, uh, I'm here. <laughs> I'm a person. I exist. And by the way, I know your language, so we can actually communicate. But it was vision, you know, the vision that says only certain people are real people and then other people don't exist. And of course, many times a person will be on the other end of that. And the message is you know, you don't exist, I'm operating as if you are not there. And so the person has to have such a pure vision on themselves that they don't take that on board, you yeah. see. That, uh, okay, you may not be able to see me, I'm terribly sorry that you're blind, but I'm here, mm. and so, you know, nothing wrong with that. You mm. see, you have to really assert your existence in a world where you're not seen. And I think that the the state of invisibility is connected with prejudice. Mm. Um, prejudice against a certain group of people causes those who have prejudice to consider that those people don't exist. You mm. know, they're, they're disregarded, disrespected, and their rights as a human being are consequently also disregarded. Mm. So, Sister Denise, uh, pure vision, how does it impact on your other aspects of functioning? Like, um, how does it change your internal processes if you're looking at somebody as a soul over here? How does it change you, the viewer? Oh, and that's my first question. The second is, does the viewer change the view, that which is viewed as well? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so the first question is, um, what is it, how does it impact on you, the viewer? Well, the viewer who doesn't see something, they, um, it's like selective viewing. You know, they, they will see who is of interest to them and anybody else they won't see. And so they do not um, take responsibility for the fact that that is a form of negative karma for which they will have to pay. So I think that once you realize that you um, are doing a negative karma and you will have to pay for it, that's an incentive to not do that because why would you pay unnecessarily if you can avoid it? Uh, the other thing is that um, the way you look at a person, I mean, not just seeing the soul, but also seeing the person's value, the person's validity, you are actually giving a message to that person and making that person feel good about themselves by the way that you look at them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the, um, there is a saying in India that as your vision, so is the world. So if you only see 50% of the world or 20% of the world, then that other part of the world is, to all intents and purposes, negated. And so it, um, it's as if you are erasing it from its own right to exist. So that is a negative thing. Now, if you are having pure vision and you're seeing what's real, and you're disregarding what's unreal, then it means that you're giving greater importance to the real, and that which is unreal is minimized. So uh, what is unreal is very often connected with what is negative. You know how sometimes people will use insulting words to each other. 
and uh, call each other names. Well, that's unreal. Uh, but it creates a huge atmosphere, a huge vibration because of the emotions that are elicited by that. If you're using pure vision and you're completely disregarding that, like erasing that from your um, from what you're absorbing, um, you're you're causing that scene in the drama to be like smoke. You know, it just disappears, and so then its impact on consciousness is reduced drastically. So in that way, you can actually change the way. Um, people experience their reality. Mm -hmm. uh, because the way the material world is, um, to a large extent, it depends on how you perceive it. And people in materialism don't really realize that, but you know, science has begun to have to deal with the observer effect. Now, what does that mean? Well, the observer effect is that if you want something to be a certain way, it becomes that way. So you're not really looking neutrally at your scientific experiment. You can actually make it one way or the other way uh, because of the effect of consciousness on matter. Uh, there are other uh, people who've done experiments which indicate that, you know, the elements of matter or water or something like this will, um, you know, be more um, harmonious, um, the crystals will be more beautiful uh, than if you look at it with hatred, for example. Um, a person feels the look that they're receiving and they feel it so much that they can become it. You know, if, if you're looked at with hatred, you feel small, you feel uh, that you don't exist, you take that on board, you internalize it, you see. But if you have pure vision on yourself, and even pure vision on somebody who doesn't have pure vision on you, it's as if you're erasing that impurity. So um, that, that's something that's a sign of a, of a powerful soul, actually. Mm. Okay. And it can be done. Okay. Mr. Denise, you um, include um, God in your um, earlier answer. Uh, what is God's pure vision for you as an individual? Well, God will see me as his child. God will see me as my potential. God will see me as passing all the exams. God will see me as you know, uh, coming into my own, coming into my power. And it's very important for individuals to see themselves as God see them, sees them, rather than see themselves as other people say God sees them, which they don't know, you know. So many will say, oh, God wouldn't like you. How do you know? Who are you? You don't know, you know. How many people really know God? You have to be in relationship with God to enjoy that um, that quality of interaction with the discarnate supreme being, you know. And most people are so into their material identity that there's such a barrier between themselves as uh, themselves and God so that they can only operate on the basis of something closer to superstition and blind faith. Hmm. How does one's pure vision for oneself change you as a person? Suppose a thought arises, maybe I'm not important. Uh, you have to counteract that immediately with the pure vision that says, well, of course you're important, you're a child of God. You see, so that you use this created pure vision that you're learning that is really real to remove the, um, the illusion of negativity uh, that many people uh, see themselves in terms of because of the way other people have seen them and they've internalized that and what other people have looked at them as or have spoken to them as or have 
interacted with them as they they take that and they become that, you see. Well, you don't have to. Mm. And you can undo that. Okay. Mr. So Denise, the impression that I get as I sit here listening to you speaking is that there is a sense of healing from all of this. Yes. Um, how, how, take us into that. That's the, the energy that you're admitting, one who's been healed through pure vision. Um, explain that to us. Well, when you're seeing yourself or you're seeing someone in a pure way, you're seeing what's real. And um, the thing that made a person damaged was uh, an impure vision, a vision which wishes harm. You've heard of the evil eye. Hmm. And a lot of cultures really believe in that, that if you look at someone with bad intention, it might even kill them and mm -hmm. definitely would damage them. And so you're counteracting all of that negativity. You know, negativity is darkness, and darkness isn't anything in and of itself, whereas light is, you see. As soon as you illuminate, or as soon as you light a light, the attention goes to that because the light is actually something. The darkness is the absence of something. Hmm. Okay, so um, pure vision, is it a, a journey? Uh, do you um, refine your pure vision? The pure vision that you had when you first started meditating, is it the same as it is now? Have you refined it? Have you... Um, um, are you, are you wearing a pair of spiritual glasses? You know, in the early part of a meditation practice, it may be suggested to you, see the soul. And then you may say, well, I don't know what that means. You may have to sit with that and try it out a hundred different ways until you say to yourself, okay, I think this is what it is. And then you'll do that until you don't think that anymore. You think... No, it's this. So there's a, a continuous refining process of what you mean by that or how you interpret that expression, pure vision. Okay. Mr. So Denise, on a daily basis, we encounter people's dark side. And so if somebody's conduct towards you is um, wretched and you're um, on this side of the... Um, wall trying to uh, maintain pure vision. Uh, how do you then, whilst maintaining your pure vision, uh, handle um, someone else's darkness? I think that here you have to use this expression that it takes two to tango. And if somebody is coming at you from their dark side, but you're not seeing that, you're seeing their light side, their dark side is not going to have anything to connect with. So it's not going to be very powerful. You're, in a way, disempowering it. True, that's very powerful. So someone else's ugliness can only touch you if it resonates with something within you? Or if you accept it, or you take it on board. Mm. But if you look right past it, I mean, just as a person can not look at another person because they selectively don't notice them, well, you can do the same with darkness. Okay. How does ego fit into this picture? Uh, ego is um, very often qualified as false ego. So mm -hmm. um, a, a person with ego is often said to have a, a mask and they're saying, look at my mask, you know. But if you say, yeah, okay, but I can see you too, the mask is transparent. It doesn't work. It doesn't block anything. You're going right through that mm -hmm. and interacting with the person, so their mask isn't working. Mm. Okay. So in that way, um, you, you get right past that ego mask. Mm. I think when you have pure vision, you're also having to be honest at the same time. Uh, explain that. Well, pure vision is real, uh, and honesty is also to be real. And so if you're dishonest, you'll stop at the false um, mask, of the mask of false ego. But if you're honest, you will see clearly 
and see right through that. I think it's a an attribute of honesty. You mm. can't be deceived. Mm. Mr. Denise, I've heard the expression, as is your vision, so is the world. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, uh, the world is a perception. And so um, the way you're looking at it is like a projection. Mm. And so if you're projecting on the world how you are, that is what's reflected back to you. And so if you are um, looking right through and seeing it as it is, then, you know, that comes back to you. So people really need to be careful about projecting because when you project, you're not seeing the world as it is, you're seeing the world as you are. Mm. And then if you are looking for the meaningfulness in the world, then you will detect things that have meaning and you will relate to those things. So then in that way, the world is as you are that way. Mm. Okay. Mr. Denise, um, where does pure vision take you on your spiritual journey? Spirituality, um, as we heard from all your previous talks, uh, is not just about spiritual vision, it's about a whole lot of other things. How does spiritual vision, seeing somebody in as a soul, take you to um, where on your spiritual journey? Does, well, how does it impact on the rest of you? You know, it's very easy to find fault with people. It's very mm -hmm. easy to find their mistakes. Um, but every person is endowed with virtues and qualities for which you need your third eye to be able to see them. So pure vision also means choosing to see with the third eye those things that may be very hidden behind these veils of sufferings and faults and this and that that uh, is actually a, a, a mask covering over the person who would be something very different if they're not caught up in their particular situation. Does um, pure vision uh, cool you down in any way? Because um, yes. uh, because when somebody looks at somebody else with hatred, there's almost a heat that they're generating. Uh, well, whereas pure vision, what, what, what temperature is that? It is cool. It's okay. very cool. Mm. Uh, when you're looking at somebody with hatred, you actually change how they look because, you know, you kind of give them bigger teeth and <laughs> sort of ugly yeah. uh, uh, attributes um, because you see them as you are. Mm. You see, you, you mm. see them through that filter of hatred. Mm. Uh, but if you see past that, and you see the person, you know, independently of um, even their behavior, you see, uh, then you can actually bring the person back to who they are when they're re in their reality. Mm. So it is very powerful. Mm, okay. Okay, Sister Denise, unfortunately, I think we've come to the end of today's um, talk. Um, it's quite fascinating as to the impact that something as simple as how you see a human being um, appears makes such a difference to, well, your relationship and everything from there. So uh, you've opened quite a door uh, that had hitherto remained closed for a lot of viewers. And for that, I thank you. Thank you. So those of you who are at home watching today's episode, uh, I'm not sure of pure vision as fallen previously into your vocabulary, but Sister Denise has introduced to us today something very fresh and new. And I think the um, aspect that stays with me most is that the observer affects the observed, uh, which is a very, very powerful way of looking at life and reality. And I think the next time you're feeling any negative feeling either towards yourself or another person, do remember that just your vision can actually harm another person. And it's so uh, powerful to hear Sister Denise's experience of uh, being a yogi um, bring this home to us. Um, and uh, 
I also like the aspect that as you, as is your vision, so is your world. So, Sister Denise, thank you very much for joining us today. And you at home, uh, I hope that your vision changes in a manner that benefits you and doesn't harm you or anyone else. Thank you for joining us and good day. Thank you.